A Jamestown foundation compiled a table of data on 12 key plants in the Russian missile industry. According to Analyze, U.S. Tomahawk missiles are enough to destroy these 12 Russian long-range weapon factories. Recall Ukraine has requested Tomahawk missiles from the United States as part of a non-nuclear deterrence package as systems with a firing range several times greater than the ATACMS operational tactical complexes. This was reported by the New York Times. At the same time, a high-ranking U.S. official called the fulfillment of this request completely unrealistic. In any case, Defense Express admits that the discussion was about land-based tomahawks, which are used in the U.S. Army for medium-range Typhon complexes. On the one hand, the U.S. Army itself has only two Typhon batteries with four launchers each. On the other hand, the Typhon launcher itself for Tomahawk is based on an improvised solution, a universal Mark 41 launch cell standard for U.S. Navy surface ships was installed on a land platform. It is noted that the Raduga Design Bureau is the plant where the final assembly of the KH-101 cruise missiles take place. The NPO Machino Stroyenia Design Bureau produces P-800 and Zircon missiles. The Votkinsk plant produces 9M723 ballistic missiles up to the Iskander missile launch system and in Soviet times, missiles from the Tochka-U missile launch systems were manufactured there. The NPK KB Machino Stroyenia also produces ballistic missiles for the Iskander complexes. Ukrainian analysts believe that a strike drone will clearly not be enough to destroy such long-range plants. Powerful and long-range arguments are required for such a task and the Tomahawk is perfect for this. Jamestown Foundation analysts advise Ukraine to develop its own liquid-fueled medium-range ballistic missile as if such a weapon could be developed in a few months, although in reality it would take at least several years and only under favorable circumstances. Recall Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed Ukraine's request for Tomahawk missiles but stressed that it was confidential information between Ukraine and the White House. The head of state said this in an interview with representatives of leading media in northern European countries commenting on the information of the New York Times publication that Zelensky asked for Tomahawk missiles as a secret part of the victory plan. When many countries started to support the victory plan, you see what is happening in the media now. They said that Ukraine wants or wanted to get a lot of missiles like Tomahawk, he said. At the same time, Zelensky emphasized that this was confidential information between Ukraine and the White House and expressed outrage that this information was leaked into the information space. How should we understand these messages? So, this means that there is nothing confidential between the partners, Zelensky added. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko called on the United States to remove nuclear weapons from Eurasian countries in order to create conditions for dialogue. Then we will not stay on the sidelines. I am replying to those who are worried today about the fact that we have tactical nuclear weapons deployed on the territory of Belarus, Lukashenko said addressing the Minsk International Conference on Eurasian Security on Thursday. Commenting on reports about North Korean troops in Russia, he said that no one has seen any North Koreans on the front line with Ukraine and accused Western countries of inflating this fact, which may lead to escalation. They are inflating it for what? To finally put pressure on the European Union and introduce NATO troops into this conflict in Ukraine. Otherwise, there will be defeat, Lukashenko said adding that both all conflict sides should sit down at the negotiating table without any preconditions. Speaking about parliamentary election in Georgia, the Belarusian president denied Russia's interference. They say it's Russia meddling into Georgian election, but Russia has nothing to do with it, I know this very well, it had nothing to do with it, Lukashenko said. Для реальной разрядки обстановки создания условий диалога необходимо вывести 
американское ядерное оружие с территории стран Евразии. Это смертоносный арсенал, анахронизм холодной Европы. Тогда и мы в стране не останемся. Это я отвечаю тем, кто сегодня переживает за то, что у нас размещено тактическое ядерное оружие на территории Беларуси. Держит и противовесов привело к деградации безопасности во всех сферах. Ну что сотворили грузины? Они хотят прозрачности в своей стране и в политике, и в экономике и так далее. Они приняли, законная власть приняла соответствующее решение на законодательном уровне. Что и при том один в один повторили то, что есть в Америке и даже мягче сделали. А они посоветовали заранее. А проснулся дядя Джо там или еще кто-то там в Евросоюзе и не так подумал, не так посмотрел. Уничтожают страну. Вот Россия и все. До России никакого отношения. Я это хорошо знаю. Не имела никакого отношения. Я извиняюсь, может что-то не так, но это уже ваше было решение. Опасна сегодня одна из особенностей эскалации конфликта. Почему ухватились за неких северокорейцев и прочих, хотя на линии фронта ни россияне, ни украинцы, ни мы их там не видим? А как помогает там Северная Корея, Беларусь, об этом знают только Россия и мы. Но это грозит эскалацией. Они этот, раздувают этот факт. Они его раздувают для чего? Чтобы окончательно надавить на Европейский Союз и увести войска НАТО в этот конфликт. В противном случае будет поражение. Западной мягкой силы НКО. Нам в Европе это надо, нам это не надо. Это ни России, ни Украине, ни нам и вам тоже, евразийскому континенту, это не нужно. Но опасность велика. Поэтому сегодня, прежде чем выдвигать какие-то с одной другой стороны концепции и, как это называется у них, план победы или еще чего-то, все это возможно, даже глупости. Но надо сесть за стол переговоров без предварительных условий. Стоит национально... Иран could respond to Israel's recent attacks before the U.S. presidential election on November 5th, CNN has reported, citing an unnamed high-ranking source. Israel has been expecting a potential response to its October 26 strike on Iran. Israel says it struck 20 military sites in Iran that were used to carry out attacks against it. After this first ever open attack on Iran, Tehran downplayed the effect of the Israeli strike, and it was unclear whether it would attempt a major response. Iran's foreign minister Abbas Arachi stated on Tuesday that Israel's attack only caused limited damage. However, he pledged that his country will neither delay nor rush its response to Israel's strike. The Israeli regime will face the consequences of its miscalculation about Iran's power, capability and the willpower of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the minister vowed. The attack damaged facilities at a secretive military base southeast of the Iranian capital that experts in the past have linked to Tehran's one-time nuclear weapons program and at another base tied to its ballistic missile program. Satellite images suggest that a ballistic missiles base run by the paramilitary Revolutionary Guard was damaged during the Israeli strike. Two other bases near capital Tehran that manufacture ballistic missiles were also damaged during the attack, suggesting that Israel appears to have targeted Iran's missile production process. It remains unclear exactly how many sites were targeted. Israel's attack was in itself in retaliation for the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired on Israel earlier this month.